Good morning, students. In this class, we are going to see the subject object oriented analysis and design. Myself, Mrs. S. Sangeeta, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Information Technology in Kongonadu College of Engineering and Technology. So, in unit one, we are going to see the topic which is called use case diagram. So, actually, what is a use case diagram means? It's a graphical representation of the system models as software. Okay. So it's a graphic depiction of the interactions among the elements of a software. There will be a more number of elements in a software. So uh, in the UML diagram, one of the type is uh, called the use case diagram. So that topic only we are going to see in this class. So this is the definition for use case diagram. Actually, the use case diagrams specify the events of your system and their flows. Okay. So in the use case diagram, normally the actor will be there and the actor will initiate some actions. Those actions are called as use cases. Normally the use cases or the events are tasks initiated by the actor. Uh, sometimes the actor will give the input to the system. Sometimes the actor will get the output from the system. So that will be the relationship between the actor and the use case. So if you are able to draw the use case on your own, then we can say that uh, you got the complete idea of the software and you have understood the complete requirements of the customer. Okay. So actually the use case diagrams specify the events of a system and the air flows. So which activity should be done first and which should be done next like that, the sequence will be there. And then it shows the relationship between the actor and the use case. So actually, who is the actor? Actor uh, is not only the user. The actor uh, may be uh, the object or help user, uh, those who ever, uh, um, uh, anyone can be the actor. So, but the actor uh, will be responsible for uh, interaction with the use cases, okay. It never describes about how they are implemented. So we here, we don't want to uh, mention how we are going to implement that particular task or else how we are going to represent the actor and all, okay. The use case diagrams are used at following places like requirement analysis. So if you are uh, collecting the requirements from the user or else customer, so to represent uh, the requirements of the customer, you can use the use case diagram as a as one of the tool, as well as when we prepare the model of your system, the use case diagram can be used. Okay, as well as in reverse engineering and forward engineering also, the use case diagram can be used. Uh, in forward engineering, uh, when you are moving from one phase to another phase, like uh, uh, once you have completed the analysis phase of the software development, you are moving the output of the analysis phase to the next level, which is called a design phase. The people, those who are working in the design phase has to understand what has been done in the analysis phase. So for understanding purpose, the UML diagram, that is the use case diagram can be used. So uh, once uh, the design process is over, the next level is called implementation level. The people, those who are working in implementation level, those who are called as the software developers has to understand the customer requirements clearly, as well as they have to, uh, they have to know what has been uh, done in design. Okay, so like that, uh, in, uh, so the uh, use case diagram is used in forward manner for understanding purpose. This is called forward engineering. So what is called a reverse engineering? Once you have developed the entire software and you have de delivered that particular software to the customer and the customer is going to use the software. If you want to make the customer to uh, understand, to make the customer to understand about the software and the tasks mentioned in the use case diagram, you can show the use case diagram to the customer and the use case, and the use case diagram will make them to understand about the events mentioned. Okay, so the next, uh, 
the representation of the use case diagram there are two kinds of representations but actually the use case diagram means the visual representation only uh, is taken but one more representation is there which is called a textual representation that is called as a, a use case scenario actually okay so uh, what is the textual representation or uh, use case scenario so normally what we will do if we want to do any task just we will try to uh, mention it in uh, simpler terms like uh, do something like that just we will mention but uh, in in that two terms or else in the particular sentence it will cover some set of activities so uh, here also uh, once we have mentioned the use case uh, in simpler manner we if we need to elaborate the steps what are going to be done under that particular use case we are going we can use the use case scenario in use case scenario just you will mention the step numbers so the first under this use case first this step will be done and the second step will be like this so like that uh, uh, by mentioning the step numbers we will write everything in textual form okay so we will see some example for this textual representation later because it is coming uh, in the forthcoming topics i will explain it uh, separately uh, and then okay it helps us to design a system from the end user's perspective by mentioning the entire requirements in the uh, use case diagram and it is the it is an effective technique for communicating system behavior in the user stem terms because in the use case diagram we are not going to use any technical term just we are going to mention Uh, the simpler terms in use case diagram okay next to uh, the purposes of use case diagram uh, to identify the functions and how roles uh, interact with them here the uh, term which is called as role is mentioning about the actor okay how the actors role or roles interact with the system that is interact through the use case and then it is capturing the dynamic aspect of the system okay so it is completely activity based that is action based that's why here we mentioned that as the dynamic aspect of your system and this use case diagram can be used for collecting the requirements from the customers as well as uh, it is providing the outside view of your system okay the system is going to cover these kind of functionalities like that we can understand okay if you are any external user if you don't don't know anything about the particular software you, but you need to know something about the system what is it is going to cover so if you want to get some view you can do like this and then uh, for identifying internal and external factors uh, we can use the use case diagram next is system boundary Oh, oh sorry uh, so this is one uh, real time example for the use case diagram here we had some notations i will uh, show you what are the notations used in use case diagram so here uh, uh, we had some stick figures uh, called uh, cellular phone customer external phone company okay so these stick figures are uh, called as actors okay and uh, the oval shape which is uh, uh, called as use case the uh, form of use case will be first we will mention the verb the verb will be followed by some noun okay like handle messages handle call manage bill like that so first you have to start the use case with some verb and it should be followed by some noun okay so this is called use case normally the use cases will be mentioned uh, using oval shape and then the overall that rectangle box is there no that is called a system boundary uh, the system boundary always will cover the entire use cases in a system okay next the communication links between the actor and the use case so the uh, link between the stick figure and the use case that is called association so this is uh mentioning the interaction between the actor and the use case so by using the communication links what we are going to know is just uh, how the actor is initiating some actions as well as which actor is uh, 
getting output from the use case or else getting affected by the use case like that we can understand so easily okay here we have uh, some uh, some conditions like uh, we don't want to ex expect uh, all the use cases has to be connected with all the actors uh, like that we don't want to expect but the if we have any actor uh, that actor has to be connected with some number of use cases that is enough okay but in the diagram we have some actor but he didn't uh, interact with any of the use case uh, that kind of actor has to be neglected okay okay uh, that's all so this is about the use case diagram actually the use case diagram is the is one kind of uml diagram which is mainly used for understanding the customer requirements and as well as for mentioning the customer requirements as well as for understanding what are the events going to be covered in the software okay okay thank you for listening